guys, welcome back to a brand new video. I'm Rex Finance and today we're gonna talk about my top three stocks that I think are gonna double in the year 2021. Now I rarely start off videos like this, but I have to. We just hit 20,000 subscribers, so that's just incredible. So I just wanna give a shout out to everybody that has already hit that subscribe button. But if you guys are new or returning and not yet subscribed, what are you doing? Hit the subscribe button as soon as you can so we don't miss any of this awesome content that keeps coming out. We have built one of the best communities on all of YouTube and I take pride in that and I wanna preserve that. So you may be wondering, why in the heck should I listen to a 19 year old on YouTube talking about stocks he thinks will double next year? Well, the easy answer for that is just the reputation I have built on YouTube and just in my investment portfolio. Back in late April, I started this YouTube channel along with my Robinhood growth portfolio. Now I'll put screenshots up on the screen right now, but I have over 900% return just this year from the stocks I invest in. And another important note is I will never be a YouTuber that uploads videos just to get views. If I'm talking about stocks and companies on my channel, I firmly believe in what I'm talking about and I myself are invested in those companies. So I'm a YouTuber that puts my money where my mouth is and more times than not, luckily it has gone my way in a very, very big way. Not to be cocky, I personally think you would be hard pressed to find any other YouTubers that have that portfolio return that I boast. Just to give you a few examples of that to add to my credibility here, I got into Workhorse at under $3. I got into Flux Power at $5, and that shot up to about $20 today. I got into LCA at $12. I got into Ride at $11.15. And I also got into XL Fleet at $15. And just a few days ago, that shot up to over $34 per share. So today I'm gonna to be talking about those three stocks that I think are likely to double in the year 2021. In these three stocks, for the reasons I already mentioned, I am personally invested in. So what I'm saying, what you hear me say in this video is what I firmly believe in. Now also take that with a grain of salt. I'm still a 19 year old, I'm not a financial advisor, so please do your own research outside of watching this video because you know ultimately you're responsible for your buying and selling in the stock market. Nothing I say today should be taken as financial advice. These are just my thoughts and ideas. But if you want early access to all of the stocks I pick or invest in personally, feel free to check out the paid monthly membership by hitting the join button down below, which is located right next to the subscribe button. You get early access to all the stocks I end up buying into along with a bunch of other perks. So again, just hit the join button for more information on that. And lastly, before I get into this first stock pick, I just wanna say, rarely is it the case that the people with the get rich quick mindset actually get rich quick. It's generally the people with a long-term investing mindset that end up getting rich quick. So if you're just getting into these companies because you think you could double your money quickly, you're not really investing for the right reasons. My main investment philosophy is to invest for the long-term with hopes for short-term gains. And obviously I've had success at almost a thousand percent return in this first year on the YouTube channel. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this first stock pick. So obviously all three of these companies I'm talking about today, I am personally invested in. And the first one we're gonna talk about is my most recent addition to my portfolio, also known as Curiosity Stream, ticker symbol C-U-R-I. I just picked up shares today. As a matter of fact, my average cost is $13.38 sense. So I'm going to get into why I think this company is going to double. But while we're on this Robinhood portfolio, I haven't ever said it in the video in the past, but you might as well do it. Sign up to Robinhood using my link in the description down below to get free money. The worst case scenario is you end up $10 richer. They're running a special holiday promotion right now. And I'll never do something that I don't believe will help you guys out. So if you want free money, use my link down in the description below, open up your Robinhood account and get a few free stocks. So to get things kicked off with Curiosity Stream, the founder of this company is actually the founder of the Discovery Channel. The Discovery Channel also owns the TV channels Animal Planet, the Science Channel, and TLC. The best way to describe this company is all of those channels that I just mentioned combined, but in Netflix form. Now what sets Curiosity Stream apart from everybody else is that its sole focus is on nonfiction documentaries. So it's informative, 
factual content. And there are plenty of perks that come along with creating factual content and documentaries over scripted films. And I'll dive into those things as we dive deeper into this company. So again, the founder of this company founded the Discovery Channel. His name is John Hendricks. He is very highly regarded in the world of entertainment. And the slide that I'm showing on the screen now is going to be a little bit blurry behind me just for the fact that this presentation isn't publicly available. And this is actually part of an investor presentation that John Hendricks did just a few months ago. What this slide is saying is that we're in the third revolution of television. The first revolution was broadcast and NBC was the pioneer. The second revolution was cable television. HBO was the pioneer of that. And the third revolution that we're in currently is on-demand streaming. Netflix obviously is the pioneer in this revolution. Now, if we go a little bit deeper into this slide, we can see there's four main categories, movies and scripted series, factual, general TV entertainment, and sports. Regardless of what revolution we're in, sports is gonna stay relatively the same because there's not much you can change with coverage of live sports. I think this diagram is pretty simple. Curiosity Stream is the only on-demand streaming service that is solely focused on factual films. And honestly, just as a side note, I actually purchased a subscription. They're running a holiday deal right now, so I got an annual subscription for $12 per year. So that's <laughs> just a great deal, and they have premium content. I think anybody that has seen Curiosity Stream's content in films would say it's premium but it's such a low cost and that's because of several reasons. For example, John Hendrick says the maximum cost they can see for developing a factual film is around $500 to $600,000. And that's versus a scripted series such as Law and Order, which takes about five to six million dollars to produce. So it's a 10th or a 20th of the cost to produce factual documentaries. And that's part of the reason Curiosity Stream can offer its subscription package so cheap. And consumer demand for control over what we watch is really an unstoppable revolution, which is what this slide is trying to depict. And the reason Curiosity Stream is going to become the household name for factual content is because they are the only company that is solely focused on this nonfiction factual content. Companies like Netflix and Disney, sure, they're gonna develop their own nonfiction content that is very premium in quality. However, they're only expected to produce 400 to 500 films, and those films are a part of a massive library of thousands of titles. With Curiosity Stream, they already have 3,100 films, 900 of them which are original, and they have plans to up that to 12,000 nonfiction films within the next five years. Every single one of those films is a nonfiction film. It won't be lost in a wide array of genres in films like in Netflix or Disney's case. So another fun note I should mention is that Curiosity Stream actually went public via a SPAC, which might surprise some of you because I'm sure most of you have not heard of this company before, which in today's day and age of SPAC mergers, how's that even possible? But really it's just because John Hendricks didn't want to take Curiosity Stream at its concept stage. He wanted to have a working product and service that he could show off by the time he went public with it. So let's get into why I think this will double because that's quite the statement for a streaming company. It all starts with the financials and the growth they've already seen. They've doubled revenues each of the last three years, starting at $9 million in revenue, up to $18 million in revenue, and now to $39 million in revenue for the year 2020. And next year alone, they're projecting a minimum of 88% revenue growth year over year to $71 million in 2021. Now, I think they're probably going to see that triple digit revenue growth again, but you know, they set the bar low so that they can exceed the standard or their projections, which really looks good in the eyes of investors. And I'll highlight it on the screen now. We can see that their margin is already at 61%. And again, this is a very high margin company because the cost to produce these films is relatively low. And that's the main reason they can charge such a small fee for this premium content. All of their financials have improved drastically ever since the inception of the company back in 2015. And really within a few short years, this company will be turning a profit and their earnings are gonna be well and they won't have an operating loss. Now, for those of you that like to see a TAM or total addressable market, what it boils down to is about 3 billion people that like video content. And of that 3 billion people, 60% prefer factual content or enjoy watching factual films. So you're looking at 1.5, 1.8 billion people 
as a total addressable market for this company. And again, this is gonna be the household name for factual films, which is huge going forward. And just to put that 60% number into perspective, people that prefer watching sports or enjoy watching sports only accounts for 20 to 25% of that 3 billion number. So we're really seeing a shift from channel driven to menu driven or on demand content. And Curiosity Stream is trying to become that household name in the factual films category. And I already mentioned, I actually purchased a subscription to their service myself and they have over 13 million subscribers already and that number has been doubling every year as well along with that revenue number and I've been watching a series called engineering the future which has actually helped me with my investing because I'm heavily invested into clean energy going forward and that whole series is loaded with factual information on the green energy sector and the pieces that put that pie together. So one of the last things I want to mention before we leave it be with this company is the fact that the John Hendricks, the founder of Discovery Channel, the founder of Curiosity Stream, has been buying shares of stock in Kiri left and right all throughout the month of December. That is something that you love to see as an investor, a management team or a founder or a chairman investing directly into the company that they are representing. That means they really believe in what they are a part of and most importantly, through the ups and downs, the management team will feel the pain or the gain. So shareholders won't be left stranded like they are in a lot of other companies that you know the management teams don't have a stake in. If the share price tanks, John Hendrick's portfolio, his net worth is going to hurt. After all, according to the most recent update, John Hendrick's owns 822,000 shares of stock, which is ridiculous when you consider that I only own 2,000 shares. So if the share price tanks, he's gonna be feeling it way more than I will be feeling it. And he's gonna do everything in his power to change the trend and start making money. So the fact that John Hendricks wants a big position in this newfound venture for himself means a lot to me as a prospective investor. And probably most importantly, the management team has been telling us plain and simple that this company is going to double their revenues over the coming years, year after year, alongside their subscriber numbers doubling year after year. And I truly believe in this management team seeing John Hendricks's track record. He's a billionaire and I love the product that he's come up with and I'm very comfortable leaving my money in his hands and helping out this company and its growth. So now let's go ahead and move on to stock pick number two. And I really, really believe that this company is about to double in share price. It's probably not gonna take all 12 months to get there. When I first bought in at $3.50, this had around a 30 million market cap. So it is a very, very low market cap and it's not a very big company. But there are several reasons that compound and make me believe that we're on the verge of doubling up. Now I've actually already done a standalone video on this company in the past. I'll leave a link to it down in the description below and you can also hit the eye in the top right hand corner to go view this video. I go into a lot more detail than I will in this video on what this company does but you know, I'm gonna cover the bases in this video. So this company is SG Blocks, ticker symbol SGBX. This is almost entirely a financial play for me, meaning that I believe the market cap deserves a double up at minimum. Now again, I first bought shares at $3.50 and it has since run up about 50% since I first bought into the company. But even at today's valuation of a 45 million market cap, I still firmly believe that we will double up in share price from here. Their market cap is just extremely low compared to their growth and projection numbers that they have put out for the fiscal year 2021. Just to certify that claim, the management team just a few weeks ago put out their projection of a minimum of 400% revenue growth year over year to a minimum of $20 million in revenue. Right there, that is about half of what the market cap is. And most of the time with these growth Companies in the NASDAQ especially, you have at least five years of revenue priced into that market cap. But if they truly do that $20 million minimum in 2021, and the market cap is only 45 million currently, I don't see any reason the market cap shouldn't be 100 million or more. And just to add on to that fact, as we scroll down to the slide just beneath that one, we can see that SG Blocks has zero debt on their balance sheet. And that is huge for a small company like SG Blocks. They also have around $13.1 million in cash, which is plenty to meet all of their obligations and liabilities for the fiscal year 2021. Now, also on this slide, we can see that there are only 8.6 million shares outstanding. So as soon as this stock catches investors' eyes 
it is going to rocket up like we've seen in so many low floaters lately. Next, if we dive into SG Blocks' latest 10Q, we can see that their total backlog exceeds $24.5 million, almost $25 million on the backlog. And probably more importantly, 100% of that backlog, after speaking to the companies that have ordered from them, they expect that the entire backlog will be delivered on within two years or 24 months. Now, again, that's gonna be important to see as investors. We need to see that backlog be converted to revenue. We don't wanna see those types of numbers just sit on the backlog, but if this management team can execute, we're in for a wild ride in 2021 with SG Blocks. Just to highlight quickly what SG Blocks does is they repurpose shipping containers into iconic structures like restaurants, residences, and even electric vehicle charging stations. Now again, I did an entire standalone video on this company because I'm so bullish on them going forward. So there's a link to that down in the description below and I encourage you to go check that out if you're curious about what SG Blocks does and really wanna dive into the company some more. But to save you guys this time, let's go ahead and move on to the third stock pick and the third company that I truly believe will double up its stock price in the year 2021. And that company is CleanSpark. Now, before I lose some of you, because CleanSpark has absolutely been on a tear even in the past two weeks. Over the past three months, we're up 141%. But there is a reason I believe CleanSpark is about to double up its share price in the year 2021, even though I bought shares of CleanSpark at $4.64 originally. Now, over time, I've averaged up in this position because I truly believe and I love what I'm invested in with CleanSpark. So as you can see, my average cost is up to $6.73 and I own 3,000 shares of this company. Now in this video, similar to SG Blocks, I'm not gonna cover the company as a whole or do a deep dive into the company because my entire channel is made up of videos where I dive deeply into what CleanSpark does. And I've even made several videos where I claim that I believe truly that CleanSpark will become a $500 stock or a better metric to look at would be a $5 billion market cap. So instead, in today's video, I'm gonna be focusing solely on their most recent acquisition of ATL data centers, which is also a Bitcoin mining company. And I believe regardless of the fact that CleanSpark's broader business segment in the microgrid industry is growing at 28% compounded annually, and regardless of the fact that CleanSpark has doubled their revenues three years in a row, I truly believe this acquisition alone could do enough for CleanSpark to double up the share price again from where we're at today. So obviously the company that CleanSpark most recently acquired is called ATL Data Centers. And as I mentioned, they're a Bitcoin mining company. And the reason they fit hand in hand with CleanSpark is because CleanSpark using their microgrid technologies and solutions can decrease the cost to mine Bitcoins drastically. And CleanSpark possesses the biggest cost savings yet demonstrated from a Bitcoin miner. And we all know how explosive Bitcoin can be. It's exploded past $20,000 and has even hit $27,000. And there's a lot of people that think Bitcoin prices are gonna shoot up to half a million dollars. Now I'm not knowledgeable enough on Bitcoin to make a projection like that, but I ran some numbers using a figure of $22,000 per Bitcoin. So much less than what we're trading at today per Bitcoin, but still in the realm of possibilities if we see a dip in the price per Bitcoin. And using that conservative projection, I truly believe in the first 12 months of being under CleanSpark's belt, ATL Data Centers is going to do at least $40 million in revenue. And if CleanSpark can truly drive the cost to mine down that much, a lot of that revenue is gonna hit the bottom line for CleanSpark as the company. And ATL Data Centers is already a cash flow positive company. And if Bitcoin prices keep increasing and CleanSpark can provide those cash savings, they're gonna be making a lot of money. And for those of you that are new to CleanSpark, CleanSpark loves to make accretive acquisitions. So they raise money through dilution, but the acquisition as a result offsets and is more valuable than the dilution or the harm that it caused to shareholders. And I think ATL data centers is gonna be an absolute cash cow for CleanSpark. And what they can do is go ahead and turn those revenues around and buy companies more focused around the microgrid industry, which in turn will allow them to keep doubling revenues year over year. CleanSpark's management team has already stated that through this acquisition alone, they're anticipating hundreds of new microgrid proposals just due to the fact that the cash savings they can provide for Bitcoin miners is so drastic. And if Bitcoin prices continue on the trajectory they're on, <laughs> the revenue numbers could get pretty scary. So again, if you wanna learn more about CleanSpark, I have a ton of videos on this company on my channel. Please go check them out because I do not want you guys to miss out on this once in a lifetime opportunity 
of a company to invest in for the long term. I've already seen over 300, almost 400% return on my original investment in this company, and I am nowhere near selling my shares. So with that, guys, I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. I enjoy bringing these videos to you guys all the time. Let me know your thoughts on these three companies that I brought to your attention today. Let me know if you hold any position in these stocks as well. Leave a like down below if you enjoyed this video. Also, subscribe if you're new or returning and not yet subscribed yet. Feel free to check out my paid monthly membership, which provides you with a lot of benefits and perks. And with that, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. And I'll be back this week with some brand new videos. Peace out.